How well are you able to track how people are getting to your website to be able to make purchases or interact with you via forms? Many companies out there are only able to track things at a very high level. How many people are coming from LinkedIn or from YouTube or from Google? But in this video, we wanna talk about how we can get even more granular with that data so we could understand what specific YouTube video are people coming from or what ad campaign are people coming from or what LinkedIn post are people coming from. We're gonna create a system that lets us track UTM parameters and dynamically generate our short links. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, and we help companies like yours get automated with portals, apps, and integrations. Now, I'll be the first to admit, we haven't done a great job of tracking this information ourselves at Automation Helpers. That's why we're creating the video on this today. So we were getting lots of information about people and how many were coming from YouTube and Google and things like that. But we wanted to start to ask ourselves, okay, but what kinds of content are we creating on YouTube that help people come from our YouTube videos land on our website and want to interact with us and ask for a consultation. So to do that, we need to understand at a deeper, more granular level, what it is that we can be doing in the kinds of content we're creating. Now we're not gonna to get too in depth in this specific video about UTM parameters and what they are. This is something that you can Google to learn more about to understand how you can identify your source, medium, campaign, term, and content with these links. Now there's lots of little widgets out there to help you build links with your UTM parameters. You can Google that and when you find these tools, it asks for all of this information, you can put it in, and it helps you a little bit because it constructs the links. It does some URL encoding. It adds your question mark for the query and ampersands, but it's still really annoying because you're having to add that data every single time. You have to start from scratch for every link that you're building. Well, you can imagine how annoying this gets if you want to be generating hundreds, if not thousands of links. So we wanted a process that allows us to do this dynamically via an API. One resource I've heard a lot about on LinkedIn is dub.co. This is a link shortening service, and I think it has a lot of advantages compared to Bitly. But even in the dub.co UI, if you're creating a link, you're still having to use those UTM builders and put in all your information manually. And I thought to myself, well, this is a waste of time because we're already tracking information about our videos in our content calendar, which we have inside of SmartSuite. What if I could take that information from SmartSuite pass that to generate my links, and then we could take that and dump it into YouTube. So in this video, we're gonna use SmartSuite as our project management tool, make.com as our integration layer, and dub.co for our link shortening service. So let me walk you through the data structure of how I've set up my tables inside of SmartSuite. Note that you can do this with other tools as well. If you're not using SmartSuite, you could use Airtable or other similar products. The first thing that I did is I set up a table for link destinations. This is where are we ultimately pointing to? So in this use case, we work with Softer as a partner of ours, and we send them traffic to their website for people who are signing up to Softer. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm identifying, oftentimes we send them to the Softer pricing page, and so here's the URL that people land on, and then we've got a tag ID, which is set up inside of Dub, if I take a look, we've created different tags. So one is for softer in this case. And if I go and click, I've got this copy tag ID. This is a unique identifier so we can automatically create those short links and add a tag to it in the same process. The reason I have this table of link destinations is because we presumably have multiple different destinations that we're sending people to. So even in softer's case, maybe we send them to a pricing page or maybe it's the home page, or it's somewhere else. So having this table of link destinations allows us to get a little bit more flexible with where we might be wanting to send people. Next, I have a campaigns table. Now, the first thing is that we link to that destination. Ultimately, if we've created this softer pricing destination, now we're selecting from that in our choice of destinations. So I might actually have two different campaigns, but they both point at that same destination. Then I'm adding a prefix that we're going to add to our UTM terms. This is just going to help things out. So it'll be like softer. And then if my video is on webhooks, it'd be softer underscore webhooks. So I have the ability to add this prefix. I could add something more specific if I wanted this to be softer standard or something like that to be able to make it more specific. Now the UTM campaign, think of multiple links being part of the same campaign here. In this case, I want the softer team to know that this is coming from automation helpers. And as we're tracking our own traffic, we want to know it's going to softer. So I thought the name for the campaign makes sense if I call this automation helpers softer. Now in this case, because this campaign is focused on video, our UTM source is going to be YouTube 
and the UTM medium is going to be referral. So these two together, this is really how YouTube is tracked across all sorts of different platforms. That's how YouTube tracks itself. So the nice thing is that if you copy the same source and medium, this is going to show up in your analytics the same way as it comes from the source tool itself. So we can mimic how LinkedIn actually shows up in Google Analytics or how YouTube actually shows up in Google Analytics. My link destination is just a lookup field. So when we select that destination, we're automatically showing that link destination. And same thing with my tag ID. This is also a lookup field. So that's referring to the tag ID of the link destination that we have. Next up, I have a table for my videos. I might change this later to be a table of my links specifically because we might have a video that has multiple links. In this case, the main thing is, is I'm identifying the topic. So we've got that example of triggering webhooks. And then I'm pasting in the video ID. This is the video ID inside of YouTube. And then I'm going to choose my campaign, again, from our campaigns table. And that's going to fill in most of the data for us. So let's say we want to create a new record here. And this one is going to be on UTM parameters. I click off of here. And then I'm going to choose this campaign. Let's say this is a softer standard campaign. And boom, this automatically fills in all of those values that I need. Of course, I need that ID for the actual YouTube link itself. But think of how much faster that is than going to one of those UTM builders and pasting in every single time YouTube, it's referral, here's the link of the YouTube video, here's all this information. Now someone can come in and just easily add in basically the term or the topic of what we're covering and everything else is populated for them. What I found interesting is that Dub actually has integrations for make.com, they've got an integration for Bubble and for Pipedream, they don't actually have one for Zapier at this point. So that's why we're using make.com. So now let me show you what we're doing on the make side of things. So I have a webhook configured and the purpose of this is to have that custom URL that we can say, click a button, go to that URL, send the information we need and that's gonna kick off our scenario. Then we've got this step for dub.co and we're gonna take the information that we're getting. So we're concatenating all of this data together. We're taking the URL that we're sending it. And then we've got that question mark for our query params. We've got our UTM source. We map that to the different fields dynamically. I'm doing this on this Lehman.io is going to be my short domain. We've got a workspace ID. And the only other thing that I need in the advanced settings is that we're setting the tag ID. And again, that's that unique identifier that we have back in SmartSuite for that softer tag. And then the last thing I want to do is take the short link that's created and paste this information back inside of SmartSuite. So if I click on SmartSuite to update the record, we're writing it back to the custom link shortener videos table here. And then we've got record ID or title. It's going to be the record ID that we sent along. And then we're updating the dub.co key. This is their unique identifier as well as the short link. Now inside of SmartSuite, what I've done is I've created this button to generate the dub link. Let's go ahead and modify the field settings. And you can see that we've constructed this URL formula. So here we're taking the webhook that Make gave us, this custom URL. And then we're taking the destination and the UTM source and the medium, all that information that we're sending via the webhook, we're now concatenating here. And the last part is we want to take our record ID of this specific video or the specific link so that we know which SmartSuite record to go back and update. So let's go ahead and test this out. I'm going to click this button to create the link. We can see in Make that this ran successfully. Inside of SmartSuite, we know this ran successfully because we can scroll over and see the new key and the short link that's been created. Now we can copy this short link and paste it wherever we need it to go. In this case, it's a YouTube video. And the other cool thing we did is we created another button here for the dub.co analytics. And what we did is we took their specific format for their dashboards and we concatenated that key that we wrote over. So what that means is now we could click on this button and it will open up in dub. It has an analytics screen so that we can track all of the different link clicks that we get. So now you'll be able to see your data at a much more granular level here. If I'm inside of my analytics tool, we're using plausible in this case. Now I can see the campaign. How did people actually come here? It's from this automation helpers Airtable campaign. And I can drill in further to my content. I can see what YouTube video that they came from. And I can also see the term. Maybe we've got Airtable pivot tables, which helps us so we don't have to individually click on that URL. I hope this has been helpful for you to see just how easy it is to create a custom URL shortener and be able to track the meaningful analytics for your business. If you have any questions about your own automations, don't hesitate to reach out to our website at automationhelpers.com where we're offering free 30-minute consultations.